Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Now I've previously made a couple of videos about a flawed study which was released by the Surgeon General of Florida. In one video I went over some of the flaws in the study and in the other video I showed how the study was deliberately altered to hide its flaws. Well believe it or not the flawed study has reared its ugly head again. It's turned up as the star of a meta-analysis, which has as many issues as the original Florida study. In this video, Cindy and I will be going back to the science and covering the issues with the so-called meta-analysis. But first, a quick recap on the Florida study. So this is the study here. As you can see, it isn't published in the peer-reviewed literature and its authors aren't listed. So an odd study to include in a meta-analysis, but more on that later. They use what is known as the self-controlled case series method, which is a study design where individuals act as their own control. In the final report, they compared mortality within the first 28 days following the last dose of vaccine with mortality for the next 21 weeks. The idea is if there is a problem from the vaccines, it is going to show up in increased mortality directly following the vaccine. And these are the results here. As you can see, for every age group, there was a decrease in mortality following COVID vaccination. In some cases, it was only a numerical decrease in mortality and it wasn't statistically significant. But for the over 60 group, there was actually a statistically significant decrease in mortality following vaccination, which is fantastic news. Although, to be clear, that's probably a healthy vaccine effect as opposed to being an actual decrease in mortality because they're comparing one period after vaccination with a period later after vaccination. Anyway, just to be clear, also, when they talk about all-cause mortality, they've excluded COVID mortality as well as non-natural causes of death like accidents and murder. But that wasn't what most people focused on. They instead focused on the results of the cardiac death analysis. So let's have a look at that. So for cardiac death, there was a modest increase in mortality following vaccination. Now, of course, this increase was completely offset by an even larger decrease in non-cardiac mortality over the same period. So the net effect is no increase in mortality, but most people ignored this and focused just on the cardiac mortality. Of course they did. Here's the thing, though. They hadn't used the correct self-controlled case series method in the analysis included in the report. The approach they used did not account for multiple doses, which introduces bias. The correct technique is known as the event-dependent exposures method, and it looks at the risk following each dose, as opposed to the risk after the last dose. Now, you may be wondering why the authors of the Florida study didn't do their analysis using the correct method. Well, the answer is that they did but it was removed from the final version of the report. Hmm. And you might be surprised to know that when they did this more robust analysis, they found that there was no significant increase in overall cardiac mortality after either dose or for any of the age groups where it was seen in the primary analysis. And this was emphasised in the conclusion where they said the following. In summary, although results from the primary analysis revealed a small increase in risk following COVID-19 vaccination, the estimates were biased upwards. The results from the event-dependent model that uses unbiased estimating equations adjusted for age yield non-significant results for each subgroup considered statistically significant in the primary analysis, indicating there is no increased risk for cardiac mortality following mRNA vaccinations. The risk associated with COVID-19 infection clearly outweighs any potential risk associated with mRNA vaccination. Furthermore, another previous version of the Florida report was based on an analysis using a 42 days exposure period instead of the 28 days used in the final report. 
This analysis did not detect any increase in the incidence of natural or cause or cardiac related mortality following COVID vaccination. In fact, the relative incidence of cardiac mortality following vaccination for the entire study population was 0.79, and that had a confidence interval of 0.76 to 0.82. But none of this information was included in the report that was publicly released by the Florida Surgeon General, and it certainly wasn't used in the meta-analysis, which we are now going to discuss. So this is the so-called meta-analysis here. It's called Risk of All Cause and Cardiac-Related Mortality After Vaccination Against COVID-19, a meta-analysis of self-controlled case series studies. And this is what the authors state concerning how they found the studies. We searched PubMed, Cochrane Central, Medline, clinicaltrials.gov, Scopus, and Web of Science for published articles that matched our inclusion criteria. We searched from each database's inception until November 1, 2022, which was the last day of our search. And they claim to have found three studies based on this search. The first is the Florida study which they couldn't possibly have found because it's not on any of the databases that they searched. The second study is this one, Risk of Death Following COVID-19 Vaccination or Positive SARS-CoV-2 Test in Young People in England, which again they couldn't have found because it wasn't published until May 2023, which is past their cutoff of November 2022. What they would have found is this previous version here, which is our preprint. But what they have failed to notice is that the methodology changed between versions, which affected the final results. They have used the results from the preprint, but provided the reference to the final changed version, which is just plain sloppy. Even sloppier, they mixed up the results and used the cardiac death results in the all cause death section and vice versa. The final study was this one here out of Italy, short-term mortality following COVID-19 vaccination in Bologna, Italy, a one-year study. And this one they have actually found. To misquote Meatloaf, one out of three ain't bad. Okay, so we have three papers supposedly included in the meta-analysis, a hopelessly flawed paper where the correct results were removed from the final report, a good peer-reviewed paper that wasn't actually used, and a good peer-reviewed paper that was used. Now, let's ignore the fact that the Florida paper was flawed. Was it even valid to have done this meta-analysis? There are two key standards that define the steps involved in undertaking a systematic review. PRISM, which stands for Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analyses, and the Cochrane Handbook for Systematic Reviews of Interventions. All properly performed meta-analyses follow one of these or both of these standards. Now, I will provide links in the video's descriptions in case you want to know more about these methods, but I would just like to draw your attention to one important aspect, which comes from the Cochrane Handbook. Meta-analysis should only be considered when a group of studies is sufficiently homogenous in terms of participants, interventions, and outcomes to provide a meaningful study. So let's have a look at the three studies that were included in the meta-analysis. Participants in the Florida study were age 18 and over. Participants in the England study were age 12 to 29. And participants in the Italy study were all ages. Therefore, it is clear that there is significant difference in the participants of the England study compared with the other two studies. So they shouldn't have been combined into a meta-analysis. So we have a meta-analysis that never should have been done using a highly flawed study. Let's have a look at what they did anyway. So this is the first forest plot that they produced in the study, and it's looking at all-cause mortality following vaccination. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with forest plots, they show the results of each study analysed as well as the overall result when the studies are combined. 
and the combined results are shown as a diamond. If a result is to the left of the vertical line, it means there is a decrease in mortality in the exposure period immediately following vaccination. If the result is to the right of the vertical line, there is an increase in mortality in the exposure period following vaccination. And if the result crosses the line, it means there is no significant difference in mortality between the exposure period and the control period. As you can see, the diamond crosses the line, so there is no increase in all-cause mortality following vaccination, which is great news, except the results are actually meaningless because they've used the wrong data. For the English data, they have used a hazard ratio of 0.99, but the relative risk from the study is 0.94. Whoops. And just as an aside, they shouldn't be using the term hazard ratios anyway because it has a slightly different definition than risk ratio or relative risk, which is what the studies actually measured. Anyway, in case you're wondering what it looks like if you actually use the right figures, there is still no increase in all-cause mortality following vaccination, which is consistent with every study that has been done and is, of course, great news, even if it is an in valid meta-analysis. And the authors also did some other weird analyses in this section where they removed the Italy results from the meta-analysis. But at the end of the day, there was still no increase in all-cause mortality. But for cardiac mortality, it is a different story. Now the numbers are all wrong again, so the results are meaningless, but it appears to show a very small increase in cardiac mortality following vaccination. Now, if you look more closely, this isn't remotely surprising because the flawed Florida study accounts for over 92% of the results. And we know that that flawed study shows it. So of course, if your meta-analysis mainly uses one study, it's going to show the same thing. What this means though, is that this isn't really a meta-analysis. It's just a repeat of the flawed Florida study. Nice alliteration there, hey? Now, there are also some issues with them using the wrong statistical methods to perform the meta-analysis, which bias the results in favour of the flawed Florida study. And I will provide a link to it so you can read more if you are interested. But it's a bit academic as the numbers are wrong anyway. Now, just for fun, I've done a few meta-analyses of my own. They are also invalid because we just shouldn't be combining the studies into a meta-analysis, but they're interesting. In this one, I've used the data from the previous Florida report using the six-week exposure period, which was hidden by the Surgeon General of Florida. And as you can see, there is no increase in cardiac mortality following vaccination. In fact, the diamond is to the left of the vertical line, suggesting a mortality benefit. Although, as I've previously mentioned, this is likely just a healthy vaccine effect. And in this one, I've looked at cardiac mortality following SARS-CoV-2 infection. This information was in earlier versions of the Florida report, but was removed by the Surgeon General of Florida from the final report. As you can see, there is over a 12 times increased chance of dying from a cardiac issue following COVID compared with the control period. Same disclaimer as before, the study shouldn't really be combined into a meta-analysis, but it's pretty clear that the risk following COVID is substantially higher than the risk following vaccination. And this holds for all age groups. So even though we shouldn't be combining these two studies, it's shown in each of the separate studies that you have a much higher risk of cardiac death following COVID. If you'd like to look further into the data I presented, I provide links in the video's description. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support or 
Although to be true, this we'll probably be spending it on internet access um, this month because I've lost my home internet, so I've had to use my mobile, which is more expensive. But that's life. That's why also why the video is a bit late because I was waiting for the I was waiting for my internet to be reconnected again, but it's not going to be till at least Monday. So I thought I'd um, do the video now. Anyway, I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future, as will Cindy. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.